Hi guys, uh, my name's Perry Kappa, uh, Chief Designer in Nissan Motorsport. Uh, today's Crimsafe Talking Tech episode is on the Evoke 3D Printing Centre at Nissan Motorsport. Rapid prototyping or 3D printing, uh, more commonly known nowadays, is a, a process of uh, designing something on computer and then you uh, bring that model in, in a 3D version, you bring it into the software, um, you can load it into the machine and that will produce the part from scratch in its, uh, in its 3D form and it's, um, it's excellent for doing uh, prototype parts uh, which obviously is where it got its name and um, it's uh, a great technology to have here in Nissan Motorsport. It gives us uh, extreme scope for the things that we do. This first machine that we've got here is um, a powder-based full-colour printer. So what that means is it actually lays down a, a very fine layer of powder and using uh, a, a method quite similar to a, a standard paper printer, it actually lays down and, uh, and, and fuses together that powder in extremely fine layers. So then it, it'll drop down over the build process and it can actually, um, it, as I said, it can actually do colour components. So the parts will come out with colour um, in extremely good definition. You end up with a, a part that um, it does, it can be quite fragile and brittle, but it is excellent for um, rapid prototyping and um, actually proving concepts of design. So you, you'll design something and uh, make it in this part, which is relatively cheap, uh, test it in fitment, where the, whether it be on the car, on the engine, um, and then prove the design, make any changes you need to make, and then make your final component for fit up. We bring the model in, position it in the build area, and um, maximise that volume that we've got to work with um, to make the parts faster to make and, um, and uh, minimal material so that we're not wasting material. Uh, the two machines that we've got on either side are an extrusion type uh, plastic printer, which is a very simple way to describe it. Um, it's like a, a CNC machine, but it, um, instead of cutting away material, it actually lays it down as it goes. So it works in a, a very similar way as a, a CNC machine. Um, where the head moves and it's uh, extruding a, uh, a plastic wire as such, which looks like whip snipper cord, and, um, and that produces a part at the end, which is quite strong um, and, and quite unique in the way it's actually built up. This technology is, um, is probably one of the first versions of rapid prototyping, the way it all started. Okay, this machine that we have on the left here is um, our ProJet uh, 3500 HD Max. It's actually um, a machine that uses a, a very unique method of um, manufacturing. So it's, it's still a rapid prototyper. It uh, looks very high tech, um, but it actually uses a photo curing uh, resin. So what it does is it'll, um, it'll lay down layer by layer a, um, a resin that it actually cures with UV light and the parts it produces uh, are plastic. There's obviously uh, varying materials that you can use in the machine um, but it'll, it'll lay down a, a plastic resin which it cures with UV. It also has a support which is um, simply just wax and that wax comes over into an oven and um, you melt away the wax once it's produced to, um, to reveal your final part that you've designed. To do a full build, you're probably looking at anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, and uh, your average part will take uh, in the order of 20 to 24 hours. So, uh, to produce a part, yeah, you're looking at looking at overnight. But when you think about it, we could go home at night, and this machine can be printing away while while I'm asleep in bed. The arrangement we have here is actually a technical partnership with Evoke 3D and it benefits us in the way that uh, we have the machines on site. It's a showroom for Joe and his team at Evoke 3D and um, it can showcase what we can actually do with the machines um, in relation to the racing. Motorsport is an excellent application and by being embedded within the operation here, it really pushes us uh, to try new applications 
and to develop the way that we can service demand in the market. So it's much better than being in an office somewhere or in a showroom. Uh, we're part of a professional and, and well-resourced operation, a production environment. That's why you'll also see in the machines uh, being produced some um, components that aren't actually relating to motorsport, which are, are quite unique. As an example, of the complexity of these parts, this this is something that we'd um, never even think about uh, designing and then manufacturing. It's simply not possible to make that in any other method other than uh, 3D printing. So it um, gives you, as a designer, an extreme amount of scope for what you can what you can actually design, what you can achieve. So you, you really, uh, to get the most out of it, really have to change the way you think change the way you design and um, it's fantastic for us here at Nissan Motorsport. This, uh, this one here is uh, quite a unique part. It's actually got a fan and everything inside it. So uh, what we did is produce this part. It's got a, uh, a switch so we, we didn't want to install two fans. So we could have one fan in a central location that the driver can reach. And um, with the limited rules now on the inputs to the uh, engine and uh, chassis control system for the electronics. There's limited um, number of inputs, so what we did was two fans, two fans performing one function, and uh, that's a very neat part. It, um, it it comes out of the machine fully functioning, so it's actually got a a vane type switch, which which functions and works straight out of the machine. To the right, we've got um, essentially test items. Um, so we've got a, a development uh, trumpet here. So part of the intake manifold and um, what you can do is, or what we can do, the scope that it gives us is uh, different shapes and variations in trumpet length, uh, bell mouth profile and uh, we can run those on the dyno and see, um, see their effect. Um, a, a good example of a, another functional part is actually this boot gurney. So that's actually a, a very important aerodynamic device on our cars. It's um, critical for driving the rear wing and producing that rear downforce that we need. Um, the next step is uh, is this, which is is a bit of a uh, an emerging method that we're trying here. It's actually a uh, a tool for producing a mould and then producing a carbon fibre part. So what we'll do with this is um, we'll sand it up, uh, give it a, a a coating, and then polish it. And then what we'll do is create a, a fiberglass mould which we can then pull off and, um, and make a carbon fibre part for fitment to the race car. We've been robbed a couple of times actually. So we had this screen installed. For cheap alternative. They look identical. So you think you're getting an equivalent product and you're not. Most crimp safe lookalikes can pop out because they're only held in with a piece of plastic. But crimp safe screw clamp locks the mesh and spreads the impact. Solid and sturdy and definitely instills a lot of confidence in us. If you pay for what you get, crimp safe is definitely the way to go. Better off paying the extra and getting the better product. Because if it's not crimp safe, it's not crimp safe.